الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على نبي الرحمة والهدى محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وعلى آله وأصحابه جمعين وبعد. All praise is due to Allah سبحانه وتعالى. Blessings and salutations upon Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم. We ask Allah سبحانه وتعالى to bless him and all his household, and to bless all his companions, to bless every single one of us, and to grant us goodness. Beloved brothers and sisters in Islam, we are in the greatest season of the year. We have the month of Ramadan, that is the greatest month in this Islamic calendar. Over and above that, we have a day that is the most blessed day in the week, that is the Friday. And over and above that, we have the portion of the month that is the most blessed, blessed portion of the month, and that is the last 10 days. And above that, this is the last Jumu'ah that we have. We are here gathered just after the noon, and we are sitting here for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As we are seated, we are meant to be asking ourselves, who are we? Where did we come from? Why are we here on this earth? And where are we heading? Where are those who have gone already before us? Where exactly did they go? Why did they go? How long did they last for? What did they have? Did they have what we had or more or less? Did they have a happy life or did they have a sad life? We have many problems. We have many issues, we have many difficulties. These difficulties, they are sometimes personal. We're either connected to health or to something else on a personal level. Then we have other difficulties on a family level. We need to help resolve the matters from the root. And that is the individual. If we rectify ourselves, we will find solution to our own problems. And this is what the Qur'an says. Many of us don't know what the Qur'an is. Wallahi, we pay lip service to the Qur'an. And I'm saying many because that is the fact. It might hurt us, what I'm saying, but it's a fact. The Prophet ﷺ complained, وَقَالَ الرَّسُولُ يَا رَبِّ إِنَّ قَوْمِ اتَّخَذُوا هَذَا الْقُرْآنَ مَهْجُورًا Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, whom we claim to love and we claim to follow, he says, Oh my Rabb, my people have ignored this Qur'an. They have not taken it seriously. Now, this may have been referring to the people of the time, but the lesson is for us all. We have difficulties primarily in our lives because we have drifted very, very far away from the teachings of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And no matter what happens, we seem not to be waking up. Nothing. We are in a slumber as an ummah, deep slumber. We are quick to fight with one another. We are quick to swear. We are quick to want our way. What is this man saying today? Why doesn't he say what I want him to say? Why is this attitude? Because we are arrogant. That's the truth. The arrogance that is embedded within that we seem not to want to bring to the fore. We don't want to deal with it, we don't want to admit it. We need to go back to the teachings of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Because we have been taught from the first generation, your problems will never be solved until you go back to the pristine, pure teachings of the messenger and the path upon which his companions were. That is clean, it's clean. And then we feel in our hearts, no, we'd like to debate with that. We have another path that we follow. We know better than the Prophet and we know better than all his companions. Put together, we have something new. And then we want to justify it and start calling names to people who call us towards what the Prophet was and what the companion was upon. The companions were upon. May Allah's peace be upon all of them. So how will we find solution to our matters? What is the unifying factor of the Ummah? What will bring us together? Nothing besides the Shahada. 
besides the pristine deen, undebated. May Allah grant us an understanding. So it's about time we started checking the rust in our system. And it's about time we started polishing off everything that we are doing that is wrong. We want to solve the problems on a global level when we have not made peace with ourselves. It's not going to happen. Impossible. And this is the Quranic verse. Then again, we don't understand the Quran. We don't want to understand it. We have reduced it to just a session of melodious recitation to say beautiful reading. That's where it stops. Let's face the facts. I might say something very bitter, but it is the solution. It's about time we change that attitude. And it's about time we understood what Ramadan is all about. And it's about time we understood who Allah is and why He has placed us on this globe. And what He did for us as a favor in that He sent some form of a manual for our success. The Quran says, إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يُغَيِّرُ مَا بِقَوْمٍ حَتَّى يُغَيِّرُ مَا بِأَنفُسِهِمْ I'm sure we've heard that verse thousands of times. But we hear it, we might hear its meaning, that's where it stops. It's about time we now picked it up and did something about it. This verse means Allah will not change the condition of the ummah. Until the time comes that every single individual from the Ummah changes himself or herself. There we are. That's a divine statement. So we get angry when we hear that. No, we want to have our own solution. We get happy when we make a big noise about something and feel that that is the solution to the problem. Whereas the solution is starting here. It starts with me to begin with. Before you, myself, the speaker. May Allah grant me the ability to look within myself to remove the rust within my own life and to return to the pristine religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and may Allah grant the same for all of us Wallahi the statement is very powerful I will be asked on the day of judgment I will be asked what I did, what I said how I delivered the message and you will be asked something got to your ears what did you do about it? did it make you upset? That why did he say this? Or did it go straight through to your heart to say, no, I need to change my lifestyle. Many of us are drunkards. May Allah safeguard us. When I say many, I'm talking of a lot of the youth. We face facts. Many of the youngsters are on drugs. We face facts. We know the crisis that is within us. Not only in this country or this city. Throughout the globe, there are so many people who are on weed. I don't know if you know what I'm talking about. And I'm, I'm telling you a fact. Then we think that we are doing the ummah a favor by being a part of it. Allahu Akbar. Where are we? How are we thinking? Are our brains knocked out totally? Gone, covered, intoxicated? Many of us cannot leave the adultery we are committing for years on end. We cannot say goodbye to it. No, we go back to it. In Ramadan, may Allah protect us. Remember, we're not talking here of majority. There is a difference between many and majority, just to clarify. But at the same time, many is a figure. Many people cannot leave their bad habit of smoking to start with. And they know it's bad. And they know when they purchase, they want to debate about whether it's makru or haram. Makru is bad, haram is bad. It's either bad or bad. And we say, no, I can't give it up. For what? And then we want to solve the crisis of the whole ummah. Where are we? Where's our brains? Knocked out completely, flat on the ground. Allah accept us. We can't do one thing, one thing, one thing, Allahu Akbar, not one, not one, unless it suits us, there you are. This is the crisis, I'm hitting the nail not on the head, we've driven it right home, may Allah protect us. So this is the last lecture in the month of Ramadan, are we going to change our lives, A revolution change, Wallahi you will find the crisis of the whole ummah solved, resolved. By the will of Allah. If every one of us here decides bad habits cut now, the problem of the ummah is solved. We cling to the bad habits so much. I can give you more examples. How many of us gamble in Ramadan? How many brothers and sisters go to the casinos? How many of our wives and children are suffering because of us? How many husbands are suffering because of their wives sometimes? 
how many extramarital affairs are happening during Ramadan? Forget about outside. Outside is even, you know, something that is worse. And Ramadan is in sin, it is greater. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the softening of the heart. Then we want to say, no, I have a feeling for my fellow brothers and sisters across the globe. What feeling? Have you gone back to what Allah said is a true feeling? When the same enemy tells you that we've studied your religion, we know it is the truth, and we're not worried about you because your numbers in Fajr and in Isha are minute. They are telling you the day we will worry is the day that the numbers in Fajr are just like the Jumu'ah. You see how we are seated here today? Come for Fajr tomorrow morning, see how many safs there are here. Then tell me, do we really have a genuine feeling for the Ummah? Or, and I'm going to hit the button again, do we treat the Ummah how we treat the Quran? Pay lip service and that's where it stops. Exactly what we do to the Quran. We read it, we make a noise about it, we say beautiful book, it's our Quran, we, we memorize it. There are so many Huffal who are in the nightclubs. Let's face it. They are proud about their sin, arrogant, boasting to people, you know what, these are the number of girls I've slept with. Fact of life. I told you, we are human beings, we must speak reality. We don't want to speak about things that are not reality. This is the crisis, this is the real crisis of the Ummah. We've left our deen and we're just claiming to be Muslims. We come in large numbers for Jumu'ah, the other Salawat, by the way, we're waiting for the next Jumu'ah. This is the reality. Then we want crises. Solutions to everything. Where? Where are we? What is happening? May Allah grant us the ability to divorce ourselves from our sins. And may Allah open our doors. It's enough. The amount of sin that is happening is too much. And I'm talking of from the members of the Ummah. The hatred we hold in our hearts for our brethren. Whether it is within... Listen to this. In our families, we have enemies. In our communities, we have enemies. From amongst Muslims... On a national level, we have enemies, we hate people, we've already perceived certain items and we've already seen them in a certain light without even knowing them, we hate them. And that continues on a regional level and a global level. We don't like these people, we don't like those people, we don't like that person, meaning this group of people and that group of people. Where is all this hatred emanating from? What type of a heart is it? The heart of a Muslim is supposed to be clean and pure. We are supposed to be people. I always say the day of Eid does not have to be on the same day throughout the globe. Where does it teach us in the Sunnah of Muhammad وسلم, that unity means to have Eid on one day but to hate each other and kill each other and continue disliking and fighting each other and yet you think we've achieved unity because Eid is on one day. Even if you have Eid on two or three different days but you unite by tolerating each other, respecting one another, it is more important. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala open our doors. We fight with each other about things that really mean nothing in the eyes of Allah. And in the process, we make our lives focus upon how we would like someone else's life to be, forgetting about ours. So I don't like this man because his life is in another direction. His thoughts and ideas are in another direction. So I will continue fighting him in the process, not realizing that I've lost my own life. This is why the hadith says, Tuba liman shagalahu aibuhu an ayubin nas. Give good news of paradise to the one whose own weaknesses occupies him or her from engaging in that of others. And then we hear the issue of jealousy. How many of us are jealous of those around us? We're jealous of people. There is professional jealousy amongst ulama. One scholar will call the other one a name. And this scholar will call that one out of line. And this one will say this guy is a deviant. And this one will say that one is like this. For what? This is called professional jealousy. If it, if it has crept into the ulama, what kind of an ummah are we? Let's be honest. We have been taught from the very beginning that when there is a crooked line, instead of wasting your time straightening it, draw a straight one next to it and continue. People will see this is crooked, this is straight. They will understand. They will have an example. With us, we're fighting to straighten one line. Which line? That Molana, that side is a deviant. But what about us? Allahu Akbar. May Allah safeguard us. You find our, our girls, let's be honest. 
How do our girls dress? Then we say, no, what's wrong? He's being hardline. He's a fundamentalist. He doesn't understand. We're living in a free world here. Where in the Quran does it say that you're not allowed to wear a miniskirt? Allahu Akbar. This is the type of debate that is coming. Yesterday I received an email that hurt me so much where someone is debating and arguing with Allah, claiming to be Muslim. Claiming to be Muslim. Saying that Allah is oppressive because He oppresses women because of X, Y and Z. Why is this? Why don't we understand? You Look at the world. They have their rules. They have all their man-made laws. They are failing. Every country on the globe is in chaos. Every country on the globe has its own chaos and disasters. Look at South Africa, for example. Murder after murder. Rape after rape. Problem after problem. Nobody is safe. I could be shot dead right here, right now in the masjid. Nobody can do anything about it. It could be my last word as it's coming out. What will happen? May Allah safeguard us. But you find we still don't understand the solution is go back to what Allah revealed. At least Medina and Makkah and those regions where the Muslims had ruled, the problems were resolved for the time that they practiced upon the Quran and the Sunnah during the early days. But no, we say, no, 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 put that aside. I have heard Muslims saying that the Quran is dilapidated. Astaghfirullah. And then we claim to be Islam, Muslims. I've heard people who claim to be Muslims who say that there's nothing wrong with being gay. Nothing wrong with being gay. The Quran does not prohibit being gay. It only prohibits rape. When you're raping the same sex, then it's wrong. So what? When you're raping the opposite sex, then it's okay. Is that what it means? When Lut alayhi salam, and we spoke about it during Ramadan, when he said, why do you engage in this act with men and you leave the women? What does that mean? That means the act is wrong. Subhanallah, let's try and understand it. It's not speaking about rape here. It's speaking about same-sex activity because he says if you do it with the opposite sex, it's fine. Was he talking about rape or adultery? He's talking about the two getting together as though they are married. Allahu Akbar. May Allah safeguard us. And you find people claiming to be Muslim and others saying, why are you being judgmental? Nobody's judging. This is Islam. You either surrender to Islam or stop calling yourself a Muslim. One of the two. You can't say it's Islam and then no one has the right to judge that I'm not following Islam when the Islam will be taken away from us in that case. How can you say that? So this word, we hide behind it, don't be judgmental, don't be judgmental. Why? We want to get away with murder, that's all. So when a murderer is judged against, he can get up and say, Hey judge, why are you being judgmental? Why are you judging me? Fool! Allah protect us. So you find people, they are not prepared to put a scarf on their heads. Not prepared. Then we want to solve the global problems. We can't even put a piece of cloth on our heads. Then you find others telling you, this Maulana is a terrorist because, and he's a fundamentalist because he promotes a scarf on the head. Well, that's a scarf on the head. People now call it a culture. And I said, it, there will come a time when the trousers are not halfway down the backsides, below the backsides with a bum showing astaghfirullah, and people will call it a culture. And I'm speaking openly, this is the language we understand. And they'll say, this is a culture. What's wrong? Who said we're not allowed to wear this? Come on. They are taking away our modesty, our morality. They are taking away our character and conduct wholesale and we're supporting it. Take a look at the culture, the pop culture out there. The gangsterism and everything else that's happening. Where did it come from? We lost our deed. Mother is busy having an affair at work. Father is busy doing something else somewhere else. Children, what happens to them? They all have the silly company and next thing they lost and they drowned. And this is not in all cases, I'm just giving you an example. Or sometimes you have a different example where maybe they're not involved in open sin, the parents, but they have no time for their children. So why did you have those children? They have no time for them. This one at work from 6 to 8, that one at work from 7 to 5. And when do you see your children? Well, we hardly see them. And when we come home, we've got to do certain things. We're tired, we want to sleep. The child is brought up by who? By the friends at school. And who are the friends at school? Those who sit behind pornography all day. So what does the child start doing? Nothing can make him happy besides pornography. So they hooked. 
How many men and women, especially men, Allah knows best, are hooked onto pornography. They can't leave it. Then they say, but I'm a Muslim and I'm in solidarity with this. You're in solidarity with pornography. Brother, don't be mistaken. The solidarity is with sin and with the devil, not with anything else. We are fooling ourselves. Allah says, and we know this, and I see it might irritate us, but He says that we have taken this Quran. This is from the early days. We have ignored it. We have put it aside. What happens? There is a hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam which says, "There will come a time when nothing will remain from Islam except the name. La yabqa min al Islam illa smuhu." Only its name. So people will say, I'm a Muslim, Muslim. But you look at them and you look at Islam and these are two totally different things. It's like calling a piece of pork an orange. Say, I eat oranges and you're busy eating pork. Say, what's this? These are oranges. That's what we're doing to the Quran. That's what we're doing to Islam. Where we say we're Muslims. But really what we're doing is totally haram. Outside the fold of the religion. And we're not prepared to come back. Not at all. We have Ramadan. We have auspicious occasions. We have the Eid. We have so much. We have the season of Hajj. We, sometimes people go for Hajj and their lives do not change. They come back bigger sinners. And I'm sure you can relate to what I'm saying. Then we say, I need to solve the problems. Where? In Somalia, in Palestine, in here, in there. Subhanallah. Allah says, you want to solve it? Well, if every single person solves his own life and comes back on the deen and worships Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is the Quranic solution, not mine. So people might be irritated. But why did he say that? Because if the Quran irritates us, then we have a problem. If the Quran's solutions irritate us, we have a problem. We are heading in the wrong direction. We are seeking solution. We are, we are trying to save ourselves from drowning by clinging onto straws. That's not going to save you from drowning. You need to cling onto a huge boat and jump onto it. And that boat is the Sharia. That's what will save you. At the moment, little, little things are making us happy and excited. This is not going to solve the problem of the world. We need to better ourselves because I'm going to die, you're going to die, probably and possibly within the next few seconds. Allah safeguard us. So am I ready to go? Are you ready to go? No, we're not. We worried about everybody else but ourselves. Don't you think that is shaitan's plan? The Quran says that. The Sunnah says that. Then we don't think about shaitan. No, shaitan doesn't come to me, not me. But mashallah, we're sitting in our vehicles, blasting the beat so badly that the ground is shaking one kilometer around us. Really. And we're happily looking at everyone. We say, no, music is not haram. Who said? Who said music is haram? Show us. That man is, doesn't know what he's talking about. Well, this is why I said we need to go back to the original. If Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam was here, would you have been proud of beating that beat? Would we have been following Beyonce and Britney Spears and those whose names are not even worth mentioning in the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? When all of them are depressed, all of them have family problems. Imagine nearly every hero that is followed and movie star that is followed by the bulk or by a lot of people on the globe, their lives are in shambles. Their person, they've gone through divorce after divorce, illegitimate children, drugs problems, this, that, some of them suicide, but they're still our heroes. You still find Beyonce playing in the vehicles. Allah protect us. In the month of Ramadan. And I am touching the button because I'm talking to people. We're not talking to angels here. I'm talking to people. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us a lesson. And as I said, it's the first time in my life I'm speaking like this. Open. Because it's my duty to say that brothers, we are heading in the wrong direction here. There's a path here going, for example, to Mecca. And we, want, we say we're going for Hajj, but we're facing the South Pole. <laughs> Where are we going? Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. It's a fact. It's happening in our lives. So, this is why I said, we ask Allah to grant us a lesson from the month of Ramadan. And we ask Allah to open our doors. We are definitely in solidarity with all the suffering people on the globe. Remember, it's not just Palestine. No. It is Palestine. Yes, we know it's in our hearts. The haram is there. The people are suffering. The oppression is there. But do you know, whilst we are not watching, it's happening across the globe. Across the globe. Today in Afghanistan, in Pakistan, across the globe, you name the countries, matters are happening. In the Middle East, the type of weapons being used 
are such that it destroys your reproductive system so your children are maimed. May Allah protect us. Allah safeguard us. We're sitting comfortable here. Why don't we thank Allah? When we are sitting comfortably, we still want to sin. So sometimes it's a gift of Allah to increase the problems in our lives. So at least for once we decide to raise our hands to Allah and to come to the masjid. There was a problem once a few years back where a certain man who was well known to be promoting vice. He started coming for salah, fajr, dhuhr. He was there for five salah. And one day they asked him, why is it? He said, can I have an opportunity to say a few words? They gave him a chance. He says, you all know me. I'm the biggest iblis. I'm the biggest sinner that there ever is. But I've realized all that gets me nowhere. Allah has put so many problems in my life. It's drawn me closer to him. So I want to tell everyone out there, he says, that sometimes the difficulties in your life are a mercy. Allah says, we will keep on putting them in your life until you find us. When you find us, alhamdulillah, you will find the comfort once again. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us solution. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to open our doors. We ask him to make us from those whom, when the enemies have studied us and realize what they are worried about, let's engage in that type of activity. Go and ask the enemy, what are you worried about? They'll tell you, we're not worried about anything besides when these people become religious, we've got a problem. And I want to end with one thing. When Umar ibn al-Khattabi radiallahu anhu was entering Jerusalem, what happened? They, are, they, they had to see a few signs that were there in their books. They found that these people are not interested in women. They're not interested in wealth. And they are very, very just people. Very just. And they saw the signs. I don't have time to go into that detail. When they seen this, they handed the keys. He entered without a fight. Nothing. Why? Because they knew from their belief we will not fight these people. They are more powerful than us in their religion. They are sticking to what is taught, solid. So we don't want to fight them. Here, here goes. Take the keys and gone. The same day, they sat, they had a meeting. How can we get this back from them? One thing, divert them from their religion. And that's how we get it back. What has happened today? Didn't I say moments ago? We feel we are diverted from our religion. Because wallahi, we need a wake-up call now and again to remind us Islam is in one direction. We better be in the same direction. That's the best way of wording it. We better be in that direction. And why should we let our little whims and fancies make us from those who cling to sin? For what? The day we have the power to eradicate sin in our lives and to get closer to the Almighty, you will find all the matters of the globe, inshallah, being resolved one after the other. People will just hear the name of the Muslims and they will give up and they will say, here you are. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us that victory. May He grant it to us soon. May Allah accept all our efforts. I'm not saying there are no other ways of solidarity. Yes, there are many ways, but I today decided to go to the root of the matter because I know every year you might have powerful talks of the history that doesn't help you so much every year. It will help you only to know the history. But without knowing what Allah says is the solution, you wouldn't have a solution. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from those who are not irritated by what was said today. Because I know there might be some people very irritated. If that's the case, well, what can I do? This is the solution of Allah. If we don't want it, we can continue in our mess. But we ask Allah to grant us guidance. And we ask Allah to open our doors.